Hello everyone, this is Meghnath. Welcome back. In this module, we will learn more about arrays. In the previous module, we have just saw introduction to arrays, how to declare an array. And we noticed five points about arrays in the previous module. And now, in this module, we will see more details about arrays. Before we jump into arrays, we need to understand something called ampersand, which will get the address. Now let's try to understand that. And then we'll jump into our arrays concept more about arrays. Let's see this. Now this is example 21 and this is module 21 and I just saved this file as arrays example 2. Now what I'll do now is I'll just write here int a is equal to 5 and I'll write here printf value of a and I'll write percent ld comma a. Now how stuff works in computers memory location is so let's try to understand this. Let's go back here and now if you consider this as your computer memory location now in computer memory every location every memory block every memory block will have an address and that's called memory location. So when you declare a variable int a is equal to 65 that will be saved somewhere and that will have two things. One is the actual value and memory location. So you can also find in which location in your computer the particular variable is stored. So how to find that? Using ampersand a. So ampersand a will give you the address in which this variable is stored. Now let's take some variable is stored here called 75 or 90 is stored here. And you want to find where exactly this 90 is stored. You can find it using ampersand the variable name that's used to store this 90. Right. So let's try to see that. Now, let's go back and let's go to the code now, code blocks. And I want to find which address location is this A stored. So I can actually give printf. We'll learn more about this in pointers, but yeah, address of A variable colon. Now for address, we use percent %u because it's an unsigned integer because address will be always positive and comma ampersand %a. Now this will print the address of variable a. Now let's save it and run the code. Now, now I think it's executing the previous value. So let's build it once again. Let's build it and run the code. You can see here that let's put slash in. So I'll just add slash in here. Now let's save it and build it. Let's run the code. Now you can see here the value of a is 5 and address of variable he, here you can see that the address is 6568767748. This is the address in which the variable a is stored currently in your computer. Now, now to proceed further, before we proceed further into arrays, we will see how to print the size of different data types in C. Right? So we learned that different data types in C available are, we learned char, we learned short, int, long, float and double, long double. So we have seen different data types, but these are the most frequently used ones. So we'll print size of these data types, these five data types. Now, how to print size of a data type is, you can just use size of keyword. So printf, printf, I'm just using size of char, percent ld, and size of char. So that will print the size of cat data type. Now similarly, we'll print the size of remaining four data types. So now I'm printing here short and I'll write here short, right here int, right here int, here long, right here long, right here float, right here float. Okay, now let's try to understand how, uh, what will be the size of these data types for the compiler that I'm using. Remember, remember, the size of data types depends on the compiler that you're using. The size of data types, data types depends on the compiler that you're using. So the size that you see now in my demo might be different from the size of, uh, that you get. So it might be different because your compiler might be different one than which I'm using it, but that's okay. The concept is same. So let's run the code now. Let's save it 
and build it. Let's run the code. Now let's give slash in so we're getting the same line. So I'll just put slash in here. I'm just adding slash in so that I can see the output in the new line. Let's build it. Let's run the code. You can see here size of car is uh, four byte, one byte, and uh, size of uh, short is two bytes. Size of int is four bytes long. So in my computer, the compiler is taking int and long both as four bytes, and float is four bytes. So so in your computer, it could be integer could be two bytes and long could be four bytes. That depends on the compiler. That's okay. Now we'll jump into the topic of arrays, more about arrays, and let's say this now. Now what I'll do is I'll declare an array int of marks of three and I'll write here marks of one marks of zero is equal to 65 marks of one is equal to 75 marks of two is equal to 85 now what I'll do is printf so value of value of marks of zero is equal to person D and address is equal to person U. For address we use person U, comma. So for value I have to write marks of zero. For address I have to use ampersand marks of zero. Now similarly I'll do it for I'll add slash in here. Now I'll do it for marks of one and marks of two. Now I'll put here marks of one, marks of two, marks of one, marks of two, marks of one max of two. We're done. Now now you have to notice that so max of zero, whatever address is printed, because integer is taking four bytes, the next location will be after four. The next location will be after four because integer is taking four bytes in my computer. Now let's save it and let's build it. Let's run the code. Now you can see here, you can see here. The address of first location is this. The address of next next location is this. The address of next location is this. But the difference in four bytes is because the difference in four bytes is because each value is taking four, and they are actually storing in the sequential memory location. What does it mean? Let's try to understand this. Now, this is marks of zero. This is marks of one, and this is marks of two. So arrays definitely require sequential memory location. So when I declare an array like this, when I declare an array like this, int of marks of three, so this array requires total of, total of uh, integer is taking four bytes into three. So that's equal to 12 bytes sequential memory. So now you can see here one, you can see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this array of marks requires 12 bytes of sequential memory, 12 bytes of sequential memory. Remember, if sequential memory of 12 bytes is not there, you, your array cannot be stored. Okay, so what did we learn from this is arrays require sequential memory and, and to get address of an element of an array, you just need to use ampersand, right? Now, the same thing you'll understand. Now let's take another example. Let's try to modify this. Now I change this to character array. Now let's see what will be the difference between the addresses. I'll change this to char. And I'm fine in characters you can store integers as well. And let's see how, what will be the answer now. Character takes one byte. So ideally I'm expecting that the address differences should be one. Right, let's save it. And, and let's close the output. Let's build it. Let's run the code. Now you can see that um, you can see that the address difference is only one now. It's not four because character stores uh, character requires only one byte uh, as per my compiler, right? So what did we learn from this is um, to get the value of an array element, we have to use marks of the element, and to get the address, we need to use ampersand. And most importantly, we learned that um, sorry. Most importantly, we learned that characters um, array elements are stored sequentially. So this point, we learned it, array, arrays require, require sequential memory. Arrays require sequential memory. Now, that's a drawback. Why that's a drawback is, let's try to understand this. Now, let's do this. So I'll just remove this coloring that I have given here. 
Now what I'll do is I will declare um, let's assume that this let's assume that these blocks are already occupied by some variables. Okay, done. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six bytes are filled and total how much is available? Um, total 34, six, 26 bytes are available. So available memory is available memory is 26 bytes. Right? Now what I'll do is I'll declare an array int of marks of 3. Now I want to store 3 integers but uh, uh, for 3 integers I need 12 bytes. But can I store this 3 integers in this? I cannot store because I don't have sequential memory here. So I don't have sequential memory of 12 bytes so I cannot store this array of 3 in this 26 bytes that is available. I cannot store it. That's a disadvantage. That's where linked lists are very popular. So what happens in case of linked list is it'll store the data and the address of next element. It'll store the data and address of next element. It'll store the data and address of, address of next element. So linked list doesn't require sequential memory whereas arrays require sequential memory. So, so, so now we are very clear about arrays and we learned the five points about arrays and let's see once again. So arrays are collection of similar data types. Array index starts from zero. Array size needs to be mentioned while declaring. An array variable size equal to data type size into array size. And last one is a disadvantage. Array requires a sequential memory. So in the next module, we will learn. So what's the plan for next module? In the next module, we will learn about character arrays. I hope you are very clear with the five points about arrays. And thank you and see you in the next module.